Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos. So in our last video, we added a brand new button to our pop-up screen, Directions. And the Directions screen is actually something that I asked you to download from Blackboard. It's a semi-complete uh, screen full of content, which we're going to detail what are we linking to. So if we click Directions, we get a screen. Now, if you're viewing this on your particular uh, computer or mobile device, it probably gave you some sort of notification that it's asking for your location. So you can click yes or no. If you click yes, it might show your approximate location on the map. If you click no, it'll just default to downtown San Diego. That can be edited, of course. And this gives us a map that is fully interactive. I can click and drag the map. I can zoom in. I can zoom out. I can even do Street View. This is a Google map. It's a real life Google map, interactive and such. And this works great also on a mobile device. Uh, what we also get working automatically is we click Get Directions, and it updates the map to show us our current location, our destination, and uh, a little route. This is going over to the continuing education uh, main offices. And then we get turn-by-turn -turn directions. It's about 4.9 miles, 7 minutes, etc. Well, this is very cool, but um, how, how is this working? Your DIR file, the one that you copied from last video, uh, has all the answers. So I'm going to edit the dir.html file in Notepad. And basically this is 124 lines of code. It's jQuery Mobile, of course. A lot of it is already done for us, but uh, we're going to break this down. And this is the thing. You don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. I do not expect you to write uh, all of these uh, hundred lines of code to get this to work because you don't need to. This has already been invented. You can just use it for your own purposes. So we've got the usual doc type, the head section uh, with links over to jQuery mobile, jQuery, CSS files, etc. That's old hat. What's new on line 15 is a reference to a JavaScript file hosted on the Google servers, and this is what allows us to uh, to create uh, for your humble website to check the GPS coordinates of the user. Inside of this are a lot of complex JavaScript commands that we're not going to really need to know how they work or uh, you know why they do something. We just need to use them for our purposes. But a quick overview of what we've got. Line uh, 17 defines vari uh, several variables. A map, current position, direction display, direction service. These variables are used throughout the project. For example, map is uh, used on line 28 uh, to create a new uh, basically a map object. It connects to the Google servers and uh, gets a gets a map. Uh, what zoom level do we have? We can change that of course. How else is the map defined? Center it at our current position. Uh, current position is a variable that was created that is um, that is defined on a different part of the of the code and then map type ID. We have different types of maps that Google can show, and, and the one currently set up is a road map. Well, how does it get our current position? Line 26 shows our current position is defined by a new latitude and longitude uh, query. So if we look throughout our code for other spots, we can see where the current position is active, is activated and such. So again, I'm not going to go into detail how this all works between lines 16 and 100, but basically it taps into the GPS coordinates of your device and then displays a map. 
if there are no GPS coordinates, it defaults to some predetermined position. That can be changed on line 51, for example. Location error. There's a function here. So it says, what happens if there's a location error, if it cannot grab the GPS coordinates? it'll initialize itself to these coordinates. So you'll have to look up the coordinates of your location. Just do a Google search for it. It'll give you the latitude and longitude coordinates. I plug those in here and that'll be my default view at all points, at all times. Now, how does it know where to direct you to? That is found down here in the actual body of the document. The body is pretty sh pretty small, actually. It's between line 103 and 122. And there's a spot on line 114 that has a value, and that's your destination. So instead of putting in our office location, we can put in your business location or anywhere you want. Just fill it in like a regular address and that's your ending destination. Your starting point is the GPS coordinates of the user. If those coordinates are not available, just default to whatever we tell it on line 51. When someone clicks the Get Directions button, it'll create a map and directions to the destination. The result then is this. Again, you don't need to know exactly how it works, just how to change it, how to use it to your own purposes. Um, for example, did you notice that when we come to this screen, we don't have a back button? We have the web browser back button, but we shouldn't rely on that. We need a back button actually in this, uh, in this screen. So let's set that one up. Uh, we want to have a back button and we will add it in the header of the of the page currently it says directions we want a back button so before directions uh, we'll just write back this is going to be a link it will have an href which we'll fill in in a moment and I want this to behave like a a um, button. I have an icon, data dash icon. We'll do arrow dash L, the left arrow. So we've got a button. We didn't have to actually say data role equals button. One uh, one quirk here is that if you had if you have any link in a header, it automatically becomes a button. So that's what our line 106 is uh, our 106 is saying. We've got uh, some text. It's a link, so it behaves like a button. Now, when we click that button, I want to go back to the previous screen. Um, we're going to do a trick, however. We're going to say href pound. <clears throat> what this does is it lets the button act like a button in that you can roll over it, it, it you can click it, but it doesn't go anywhere yet. We're going to use some JavaScript here. So after your data icon, we'll add on click equals quote end quote. And here we're saying when you click the button, run this JavaScript command. This is a simple command here. Inside of these quotes, we'll say history dot back open and close parentheses semicolon so this is going to take this JavaScript is going to check the history of the web browser and take us back one screen or one history state it's a JavaScript command so let's see it in action I'm going to refresh here I will click on the info button then directions that pops up I click back takes me back now remember the the directions screen is a completely separate HTML file therefore it's part of the history 
in the web browser. And so we've used this JavaScript command history.back, open and close parentheses, semicolon. We've set it in the on click parameter so that when we click the button, it executes the command. That's why we did not set an href here. We just wanted to use some simple browser back uh, functionality. So there we have it. We've got a fully functional GPS enabled page for our project. And as I said, you can set it to any starting or ending destination and customize it in other methods. We'll be looking at other customization methods in future videos.